Today in the news, we got some IPC, some AMD, and some VR. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Last week, we had the Next Horizon presentation from AMD showing us the new Epic CPUs with Zen 2 inside. During this event, AMD mentioned that their new Zen 2 architecture on Epic could yield around a 25% increase in performance at the same power envelope. Some were confused as to what this meant. Was it an IPC improvement? Was it just because of an increased core count but better efficiency? Well, it seems like the numbers changed slightly since yesterday. The news come from X Preview and they mentioned that AMD performed a dkern and RSA test for integer and floating point units. This test resulted in a 29.4% increase in the results compared to Zen 1. I'll stop here because there is some confusion with the way the term IPC is used. IPC means instructions per cycle. For example, a 4 GHz CPU will have 4 billion cycles per second. So when they calculate an improvement in instructions per cycle or IPC, it means that the CPU does more processing in one single cycle. This also means that when you compare two CPUs, the clock speed or core count is not a factor in this comparison. This is basically a clock for clock comparison of two architectures. I know most of you guys knew this, but I wanted to clear that up because according to Tech Power Up, this term is loosely interchangeable with single core performance, and it's not. If this 29.4% improvement in IPC was calculated as single core performance, not only would it be a completely false statement, but it could vary drastically with the clock speeds. A 5 GHz CPU core would always be 20% faster than a 4 GHz core, and we know it's just not the case. IPC can also vary wildly between the types of instructions that are measured. This means that this improvement could be better or worse depending on the type of workloads. That's why you should take this new 29.4% number with a grain of salt. It is probably the best case scenario cherry picked to make the CPU look as good as possible. Hopefully, this little breakdown helped you figure out exactly what it meant. Now in Radeon news, we have David Wang, the Senior Vice President of Engineering in the Graphics Division of AMD, shedding a bit of light on ray tracing for AMD. For Gamer, a Japanese gaming website, spoke with Wang about the topic and said that AMD will definitely respond to DirectX ray tracing. While this is his personal view, it's hard to separate the man from the job. I mean, he is one of two engineers that report directly to AMD's CEO. The more interesting part of this interview is when he said that ray traced games won't be mainstream until it's offered on all ranges of GPUs from low end to high end. I agree with that statement, but AMD makes the GPUs, so are they going to wait for Nvidia to offer a full line of ray tracing compatible GPUs, or are they waiting on the gaming industry to adapt it at a larger scale? What do you think? Let me know down below. Moving on, Valve is apparently working on a new VR headset. After a long partnership with HTC, it seems like they want to fly with their own virtual wings. A prototype for the device has been spotted and it looks like it's quite the upgrade from the original Vive. Looking at the photos, you can see that Valve uses two bottom mounted cameras instead of the single camera on the Vive. Not only that, but the lenses seems to be a lot bigger than on the Vive. According to Upload VR, this prototype device features a field of vision of 100 135 degrees. This is definitely a welcome upgrade from the 110 that we see on most devices. The display has a 2880 by 1600 resolution, which is the same as the Vive Pro, but is still considerably higher than most other mainstream VR headsets. The headphones that you see on the device will also apparently have haptic feedback too, which is quite interesting. Anyways, what do you guys think about the uh, move from Valve? Let me know down below. Speaking of Valve and VR, back in August, Valve said that they were in a place to invest and focus a lot more on games again. Well, it seems like we might get a taste of that investment, because apparently, a new Half-Life game is in the works. No, it's not Half-Life 3, this seems to be a prequel of the original 1998 game. While a new game is nice, this one is reportedly going to be made for VR. With a possible new headset from Valve and their knuckle controllers in the works, I wouldn't be surprised if the game was made to showcase all of the new features that these two devices will bring to the table. And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop me a like down below. You can always click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. As always, stay frosty and I'll see you on the next one.
R.I.P. Stanley, my man.